it's been a while now since I recorded a video on the topic of the coming speculative mania known as the crypto bull market. And since that time, yeah, the crypto media is definitely on the fact that, uh, okay, we're entering into another bull market. They're really trying to light it up. They're trying to get the sentiment going. Everybody in the industry is doing that. So I, this time, and one of the reasons why it's taken me a while to do this next video is because the topic of this video, I think that's important to cover before I go into any more, is the number go up thesis. I'm gonna call it the number go up myth, but the fact that I would call it the myth is one of the reasons why it's taken me a while to do another video. I've tried, I've actually done a video and thrown it away. I've thought of what I should do. One of the things that I was having a difficult time doing was approaching this with the appropriate level of humility and love because there are going to be some people who are watching this who this is very much going to make them feel uncomfortable because they have uh, invested money into uh, Bitcoin. They have bought Bitcoin with the uh, n because of the number go up narrative. And it is, uh, I know, it is very, very difficult to, uh, when you have believed something, and especially when it's something to do with money, uh, even if you've made a bad investment, oftentimes even if someone has been swindled or scammed, it is very difficult for them to admit it to themselves because um, that's tough. That's that's a tough situation, tough bind to be in. And so it wouldn't help if I came and did this particular talk and really the future talks, to be honest, uh, with, you know, maybe even the level of arrogance that I uh, maybe perceive to have or that maybe I do have on a regular basis. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to do my best to approach this with a level of humility, with a level of care, with a level of love, coming from a place that I'm not trying, I really am genuinely not trying to troll anybody or own anybody. I am merely trying to uh, express things that I have learned as a professional in this space now full-time for seven years, working very close to the metal on this space, um, getting a chance to be friends with and work with and for some of the biggest names in the space. I mean, people who go on CNBC to talk about this stuff. And uh, these are the things that I have learned. Um, and, uh, and and I'd like to share them, share them with you. So I want to talk about the number go up narrative. So what is the number go up narrative? This is the narrative that would be uh, held by somebody, how it would manifest in terms of their actions is this is the person who will tell you just buy Bitcoin. So probably the archetype of this would be uh, Michael Saylor. And uh, it can get, as you know, as you see Michael Saylor, it can get to a pretty crazy level. Obviously there's other levels where it's just like, look, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna buy and hold Bitcoin just to diversify my portfolio. I've got a little bit of Bitcoin. It seems to be going up as a trend. <clears throat> and that's, uh, and that's what I'm doing. That's how I'm participating in the space is I'm just buying some Bitcoin on Coinbase, Coinbase or whatever, and I'm holding it in my non-custodial wallet or my Trezor or my uh, uh, whatever it is, my, my uh, hard wallet. Uh, and uh, and that's that's what I'm doing, my hardware wallet. And and I think that's OK. But, you know, for all the talk of scarcity in the space, the reason why I, I speak out against this narrative is because working in this space, I will tell you that the actually the thing that is the most scarce, and if you take a minute to think about it, you'll see sort of what I'm getting at. The thing that is most scarce in this space is people thinking in a sober, clear-headed, um, logical, rational manner about what it is that they're looking at and thinking for themselves rather than just consuming a narrative of the thought leaders who have a popular podcast or whatever. Um, if we had more people who were thinking for themselves and participating, asking questions, even if they're wrong, but exploring and looking for truth, 
I think we would be much further along and we don't really have a lot of time. So for those of us who are concerned about CBDCs and, and uh, I, I can tell you from firsthand experience, there's something going on in the banking sector right now. The fact that, you know, I deal with it with my businesses and with crypto uh, and with the things that are happening with the SEC and the things that Treasury is just starting to do. Uh, we really don't have a lot of time. And what's coming next, if we want to have financial sovereignty for anybody in the world, uh, the powers that be are really trying to lock that down. And so we, uh, my own personal belief is that we need a lot more than people just buying Bitcoin on Coinbase and holding on to it. Uh, if you do believe or you find this technology interesting, I would ask that you try to think a little more deeply on it and you will do a great service to uh, yourself and the future generations. So let's talk about the number go up thesis. So obviously, as I said, the number go up thesis is, goes something like um, the price of Bitcoin always goes up. This is basically what it is. The price of Bitcoin always goes up. And so far it has, uh, certainly from zero, right? And when I got in, in 2012, late 2012, I got in at uh, $15 a Bitcoin. And about 11 months later, it went to 1,000. And that was really the time that the number go up narrative started. So that's a 60X. So I got a 60, because I sold at that top, because it was insane. Obviously it had never been at a thousand, and why would something that nobody's really using except to buy drugs on Silk Road, why would that have a 60X increase? Something, this is a glitch in the matrix, right? So those of us who were smart, and I think you'll talk to a lot of people, we, we sold. And then many of us, if we got back in, we got back in in the subsequent crash when it went back down to, I don't know, I think the low after that was 120 or something like that, right? So when we look at it from that standpoint, it, it, it has gone up, but it goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it goes down. Just because the number goes up doesn't mean that there aren't people who have not lost their shirt in Bitcoin because they have bought at the high and sold, sold at a low. So there is a, a narrative among uh, the BTC crowd that you buy and you hold forever. Uh, I recently saw that Michael Saylor is now talking about you should buy and plan to hold for 100 years, which is a, a quite a strange investment thesis if you think about it, because that means you're going to buy this asset that has, as he calls it, uh, this digital asset, which is, again, we can talk about that another time, um, that's only been around for 14 years, 15, 15 years, basically, uh, if, if we're going to count the white paper. And you're going to assume that it will still be around in 100 years. And not only that, your investment thesis is to buy an asset with money that you have now that you're grandchildren may not even it's a hundred years like in a hundred years your grandchildren may be dead right play it out in your head depending upon how old your children are my my grandchildren in a hundred years may not be on this earth so you're going to buy something that neither you nor your children nor your children's children can use that is only 15 years now and that's a wise 15 years old now, and that's a wise investment decision. Um, he compares it to like land. It's not like buying land. If I buy land now, I can use it. My children can use it. My children's children can use it. Their children can use it. We could use it today when I buy it, right? Bitcoin, he's saying not only uh, shouldn't you use it, you can't use it. Don't use it. Now, some people will say, you know, oh, he talks about you should borrow against it or whatever, which is perhaps even worse. And we can talk about that on, on, on another time. But still, as an overall investment thesis, this is sort of what you get when you get to this idea of, oh, the price of Bitcoin always goes up. But if you interrogate a little bit about why are you saying that the price of Bitcoin will go up? I'll give you an example. I have a friend who's a, a quite a talented individual, professional, uh, award-winning in his field is used to studying topics uh, for, for as a profession. This is one of the things that he does. He's a professional researcher, researcher of sorts. Very smart guy. Uh, and uh, as I say, accomplished in his life, who, you know, fell into, you know, being obsessed with Bitcoin, 
has followed the narrative, has kind of bought into the number go up narrative, has broken out of that a, a, a little bit. He's not fully, fully bought in. But I asked him, what, so what is it with this, you know, hodl, hold on for dear life? They've said it now, but it's really just a, you know, a misspelling of hold. Uh, it's a meme thing. But why, so why would you do that? And he said, well, I've, I'm keeping a little bit because, you know, in the chance that one day it really is the money of the world and everybody's using it. And because there's only 21 million Bitcoins, because it's limited in supply, that necessarily means that each one will have to be worth, you know, X amount of dollars because you take the total money supply, you divide it by 21 million, and that will tell you how much each Bitcoin is worth. And I said, okay, so you're, what you're betting on, because this is a bet, right? You're betting on something happening in the future. What you're betting on is that everybody in the world at some point would use this as money, as currency. He says, yes. I said, uh, okay, so you're making that bet. Do you use it as currency now? No. Okay. Does anybody that you know who is also making this bet along with you, so in other words, the, the rest of the number go up people, do any of them use it as currency? No. And as a matter of fact, they explicitly say, don't use it as currency, right? Michael Saylor, hold it for 100 years. Yes. Okay, so you're making a bet that something in the future is going to happen, but in the present and for the foreseeable future, you making that bet, you, can't, you shouldn't be doing that thing, that you have every incentive not to do that thing. Yes. So do you kind of see that? You kind of see how that doesn't play out? It would be very different if you were saying, oh yeah, I, I use it and I use it more and I'm around more people who are using it more this year than last year, but it's actually gone in the reverse. It's gone in the reverse. So if the value proposition, if the reason why it will have value in the future is that everyone in the future, the bet that you're making, everyone in the future will use it as currency but no one is using it in the, as currency today. And as a matter of fact, the best thing that you can do with it, which is true at this point with BTC, is not use it as currency. This is that underpants gnome situation, right? What is the catalyst of where that changes? Because then when that changes, wouldn't you no longer be holding it as well? So this is what we have to ask ourselves. This is the key. Because of that internal contradiction, I, I simply cannot hold the number go up thesis. So I, I do have another thesis. This is getting a little bit long. I do have another thesis and perhaps I will share that with you. Uh, it's something that I have noticed about the trend of how these things actually move and the price relative to utility. And I think since we've covered utility, now we've sort of said, what's the internal contradiction of number go up? I think next video I will present to you what I have found in terms of my own personal thesis about how this, how this goes and how this has worked, having been involved in it for seven years, and what the real relationship is. And then we'll see if that's a little more internally consistent. Uh, if you wanna check out more of this, if this is interesting to you, I'm going to, I'll, I'll shill, countermarkets.com, the, uh, the private telegram group that comes along with your subscription. And by the way, your subscription gets you all the back issues. So this is, again, seven years, seven years of this uh, newsletter where I write every month along with our, our other contributing writers as well, Trends and Strategies for Maximum Freedom. It's not just about this, man. We've covered everything from... Uh, Internet of Things, to AI, to drones, to sustainable farming, to the different types of capital. I mean, you name it. We have a Bitcoin and silver report. Uh, so please uh, go ahead and check that out, countermarkets.com. You can, you can get the first issue for free. We'll give you that. And it comes with the private Telegram group, as I said. That's been quite active, actually, over the last month. And I, I 
anticipate that it will continue to be active as we as we come into whatever this next cycle is going to bring. So hopefully it won't be so long in between the next video and I will see you guys next time.